Well, here we go again. Another week of NFL football is here. And, of course, we have four teams on buys. You know, bye weeks are a thing. Stuff like that. Um, speaking of one of those teams on bye, um, how about the Miami Dolphins benching Ryan Fitzpatrick for no reason whatsoever? They're 3-3 three and three right now. What in the world is the purpose of having Tua Tagovailoa start after the bye week? What is the purpose of that? Let that man learn. He's still recovering from a big injury. I don't know why he's even getting the start. It doesn't make any sense at all. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. It's crazy. Uh, but we start out on Thursday night, of course, with a god-awful matchup because, of course, it's, it's an awful matchup. It's the Giants and the Eagles. What can you say about this game other than maybe the Eagles can take first place in the NFC East? Maybe because they don't have, you know, as many losses as the other team that, due to that tie with Cincinnati. Or the Giants could be, you know, maybe in the division lead by the end of the night. Possibly. It just depends on what the Cowboys do. Speaking of the Cowboys, I might as well just get this other game out the way right now before we talk about anything else. Um, playing the football team, Washington, up in Landover, Maryland on Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock. Unfortunately... It's going to be a rough game. Both of those games are going to be rough. I mean, the NFC East is just not good. Played with injuries. Played with bad play. It's just a complete and utter disgrace. Like Cowboys players are upset with McCarthy and company. You know, the coaching staff. I mean, Washington is Washington. And the Giants are the Giants. Like, what can you say? And the Eagles are just injury prone as well. Zach Ertz is gone that I know of. Uh, but let's get into the Sunday slate, which also isn't very promising, at least at the start of the day. Uh, there's one really big matchup that I'll have to highlight, you know, before we talk about the other ones. Um, first off, Lions-Falcons, who cares? <laughs> the Battle of Ohio, Joe Burrow, Baker Mayfield, if you're interested in that, you know, it's there. <laughs> um, which Packers team are we going to get? You know, the one that got thrashed by Tampa Bay or Angry Aaron Rodgers? I think we might be seeing Angry Aaron Rodgers against the Texans. And I feel sorry for the Texans. They just, there's a lot of things wrong with that team as well. Another pretty interesting game is the Panthers and the Saints. But, I mean, I'm going to have my eyes on something else along with the Cowboys game, so I'm not going to be able to watch the Panthers Saints. It should be interesting to see how those two teams are right now. Um, I mean, the Saints have struggled a little bit. The Panthers have, you know, they played very, very tough with everybody that they played so far, so I'm wondering how that matchup's going to go. Angry Bills team, what are they going to do against the Jets? Because, oh man, the Jets are just... They're that bad. They might be even worse than the um, the Browns that went over the 16 a couple of years ago, or the Lions that went over the 16 in 08. Like the Jets are that bad, man. It's gonna be angry Josh Allen out there. But the big game at one o'clock really is the undefeated Steelers with an emerging star in Chase Claypool, a dominant defense. Not sure Bud Dupree is still out, but they still have Devin Bush, you know. No wait. No wait, Devin Bush is the one that got injured, my bad. But they have Bud Dupree, um, you know, TJ Watt, I mean, come on. Mika Fitzpatrick over there, you know. It, it just been crazy for the Steelers defense. And it's gonna be a challenge to stop Derrick Henry for the Steelers defense. On the other side, if the Steelers play well on offense, I think they can do something to that Tennessee defense. That Tennessee defense has been chipped away at slowly but surely, especially last week with the Texans. It has been chipped away at, and there have 
and some signs of some things to come in the wrong direction. But what about that 4 o'clock slate? We have four games this time, so not not nearly as bad as last week where there were just two blowouts going on at the same time and there was nothing else on. But we have to start at 3.05 because for some odd reason, this game was not flexed to 4.25. Instead, it'll be a 3.05 start, and that's the undefeated Seahawks taking on the Cardinals, a very, very talented Cardinals team, Buda Baker on defense, and you got four wide receivers on offense that can just do anything. I've said it. I said it last night. I'm going to say it again. Like, the Cardinals have enough talent to where they can run four wide receivers all the time against the Seahawks. And the Seahawks defense, I don't know if they have enough depth to keep up with the Cardinals. Like, if, if the Cardinals go four wide and they just start slinging the ball up and down the field with Kyle Murray, and, you know, Kenyon Drake is in the backfield as well, you know, I'm thinking that defense is going to get torched because they've been torched. But what can Russell Wilson do? You know, you know he's got the magic. He's got the clutch magic that he does each and every week. And I'm, I'm, I'm definitely watching this game. This one is going to be very interesting to see how this goes because Seattle has a litany of problems as well, but they're still undefeated. They just have Russell Wilson. That's all that matters. But there's three games at 325 or 425 if you live on the East Coast. Um, and honestly, not all of them look very interesting. But, I mean, the Chiefs, they're taking on the Broncos. Broncos riding off a high of winning, you know, last week against the Patriots, who just so happened to be taking on the 49ers, who who might still be injury-prone, but I'm not sure. I mean, they've, they've been in and out of the way with injuries you know, throughout the season, and of course, you know, the Jags take on the Chargers, so if you want, if you were like a Jags and Chargers fans, I, I suggest you guys just sit on out in the corner, because who cares about that game? Ain't no Chargers fans there. <laughs> what Chargers fans? Those don't exist, but, you know, yeah, I'd say, you know, keep your eyes on that Seahawks Cardinals game. It's going to be very fun. I'm a good, I can tell you that right now. Um, I'd say keep an eye on the 49ers Patriots game, too. But, you know, it's honestly not the best way to lead into, you know, your big game of the day when, in reality, the real big game of that day is two undefeated, and yet that game's at 1 o'clock. So, you know, NFL's scheduling is always going to be weird it's always going to be crazy and uh, sometimes it just happens to be moments like this where a better game is stuck at one o'clock but whatever but we do have a game at, at three three slash four o'clock that's very interesting in, in a NFC West showdown meanwhile the nightcap for Sunday night and the Monday night game. Two very interesting games there. Derek Carr, you know, Raiders are coming off a bye. And, you know, they're heading back home to take on Tom Brady and those Buccaneers. What can the Buccaneers do? What can they do right? Because, I mean, there, there's going to be a lot. There's a lot of intrigue in this game. There is a lot of stuff going on that I think is worthy of talking about. I mean, the Raiders' defense looked they looked pretty interesting last the last time we saw them against the Chiefs. They looked pretty interesting. You know, they held the Chiefs to basically nothing in the second half. And, I mean, it was just very fun to watch them beat up on the Chiefs. And the Bucks, Bucks flex their muscles against the Packers. They flex those muscles, especially on defense, where defense finally – Decided to, you know, stay awake the entire game and dominated Aaron Rodgers' company. And we'll see if they can do that again because the Raiders have a lot of guys on offense. Ruggs, Renfro, uh, I mean, uh, Jason Witten still, you know. They, they still got a lot of guys. And, of course, Josh Jacobs. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. One hell of a matchup on Sunday night. And I know. And I know Titans and Steelers fans are crying. Where? 
we should we should have our game on Sunday night. Well, it's too late for that now. And then on Monday night, defense is definitely going to shine. I don't know if Jared Goff and Nick Foles can withstand the onslaughts of Khalil Mack and Aaron Donald, respectively. I think this is going to be a defensive battle between the Bears and the Rams. A very interesting Monday night game for the first time in a while. I mean, I know, well, I know Monday night's game from this week was not very interesting, but I don't want to talk about you know the Cowboys losing to the Cardinals anymore. Talking about this game is going to be very interesting. I think there's going to be a lot of things, you know, set up, you know, a very two very dominant defenses, I think, you know. And it, it's going to come down to maybe who has the ball last. And if it's the Bears that has the ball last, oh, boy. Oh, boy. But, yeah, that's week seven in a nutshell, man. You know, 14 games. You know, not all of them completely interesting, but there's some very interesting matchups once again, just like there is every week in the NFL. And we'll see what kind of bizarre craziness happens this week, I'm telling you. Of course, there could be cancellations along the way. There could be postponements, delays, whatever. It's basically been the same as it is all season. And like I continue to say in my college football videos that I do every week, something's going to happen. It's just, it's just fact at this point. But yeah, it's pretty much going to do it. I think, you know, this week is going to tell us a lot of things in regards to these conferences. You know, the races for division titles, the races for playoff spots, like it does every week. And who's going, who in the world is going to keep the lead of the NFCs? That's the first thing. Um, second thing is that. The NFC West is very, very interesting. Very interesting um, to look at. And third, and finally, how in the world is Derek Carr going to navigate the Tampa Bay defense? And, and vice versa, how in the world, if, if Tom Brady does not get enough time to do anything, uh, the Raiders defense starts putting the clamps on Brady and company like they did with the Chiefs, it could be a long night. So with that being said, everybody, Big Boy Variety out. I'll see you, I believe, tomorrow or Thursday or whenever, whenever the IFL schedule gets released, because I'm assuming it was getting released tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, see y'all later.